Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be going over the history of the Illyrian Kingdom and the faction in RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6.5. This is taken from a longer interview I did with the historian for the mod, Jottle. So if you want to check that one out guys, check it out down in the description below. But without further ado guys, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the video. We're going to start with the Illyrian Kingdom, who are down here in the south, obviously bordered by Epirus and the Antigonids and the, Del the Delmate, I believe, as well, in the north. No, the Labate Labateans uh, as well. Yeah. Um, so these guys, it seemed, at least from the developer diary, that they were pretty influential, I've got to say, in the region. The Illyrian Kingdom? Yeah. Um, I'm, I was most excited for them because... Uh, they're a uh, little bit of an amalgam faction, um, I would say, um, because we don't really know where they are, what they exactly are, um, but they're probably somewhat successors of the Taulantians. And like you already said in the video, there were some um, Taulantian dynasts who, um, yeah, they're um, somewhat successors of the Taulantians. Um, they had this famous king called Glaucias. He was uh, a king at the time of Alexander the Great. Um, he fought with him at Pelion. Pelion is a city in the Dasaretis. You can see it in the east. If yeah. you zoom in. Yeah, there's Pelion. Um, while Alexander was in the territory of the Triballoi, um, two okay, kings no. revolted against him. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there are the Tribaloi with the, with the two people on the banner. And yeah. um, while he was there, uh, the Illyrians revolted against the Macedonians. Uh, Philip had previously subdued them, and so Alexander had to rush south to meet them. Um, there were two kings, uh, Clytos, probably a Dasaretian king, uh, so in Pelion and in um, the General Dasaretus, uh, around this giant lake that you can see there, um, called Lake L Lychnidos. And um, this is a perfect border region against Illyria. Uh, Philip built multiple fortresses there, like uh, Lychnidos and Pelion. And um, so holding these territories was really important for Mas Macedon because um, they had a very bad experience with Illyrian incursions into Mac <laughs> uh, Macedonia. Um, Phil Philip's father himself had to buy Macedon's freedom, I'd say, and had to give uh, Philip as a hostage to the Illyrians wow. at the time. And they gave him to the Thebes. Um, so yeah, the Illyrians had a lot of say in the politics of Mac Macedon at the time. And um, so the Dasaretis was this border region that was really important to hold. And they were revolting, so Alexander had to rush down there, fight a big battle at Pelion, where he um, defeated both kings. And the Dasaretian king, uh, Clytos, lost his kingdom, but um, Glaucias kept it. And he not only kept his kingdom, he survived Alexander by a long shot. Yeah. So Alexander had this whole campaign in Persia, right? and um, died, <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah, as it happens. And um, Glauc um, Glaucius was still alive. And so during the War of the Successors, the son of Antipatros, um, the regent in Macedon, he was trying to establish himself in Illyria too, especially because a rival of his in the form of a little child called Pyrrhus, maybe you have heard of him. Yep. <laughs> um, Pyrrhus was hidden in Illyria, in the court of this the same Glaucias. And um, so Cassan uh, Cassandros invaded Illyria, succeeded, but he couldn't hold it because the Greeks were against him. And they um, reconquered both Epidamnos and Apollonia and gave Epidamnos back to Glaucias, um, which I find really funny. You can see Tolan Tolantia under Caesaretos. Um, the Talantians were always associated with Epidamnos, and um, this is why we gave the city to the Illyrian Kingdom too, because um, you can look at, yeah, Mytilos the uh, Talantian in Lyssos, 
should sit in Lysos, I think. Yeah. Uh, um, is the current king? Yeah, this guy. Um, and he is the successor of a certain Monunius. Mm. And we know of both Monunius and Mutulos that they minted coins in Epidamnos. Um, the first coinage of an alluring king was of Monunius with his name and um, uh, the, the short term for, for Durachion, the alternative name of Epidamnos. Um, and not only that, we have him in the written sources, where in the prologue it is said that he fights against um, uh, Ptolemy Kiraunos. Mm. And we have his helmet found in the Dasaretes, in the tomb, um, where he wow. placed the city of Dasaretopolis. Um, there was a royal tomb of the Illyrians, and there was a helmet found um, with an inscription on the neck, Mununius. So, um, we, so scholarship is pretty sure that the same Mununius is um, the king of Illyria at the time and ruled over uh, the area of the Talantians and the Patinoi and Epidamnos, because that's where he minted his coins, and his successor still minted his coins, and mm -hmm. the Dasaretes. Um, so they are pretty sizable at the time, and they were still very heavily involved in politics in Macedon, because Bitidos is also in the written sources, next to the coins he minted, uh, where it is said that he fights uh, Alexander, the heir of Pyrrhus. Mm -hmm. um, so, in, so a couple yeah. of questions then, before we move on to their sort of, because uh, we're getting towards sort of their downfall now, aren't we? And um yeah, how they how they definitely. came to uh, lose control of the region so obviously dasaretopolis or, or, or what did we call it over here uh dasaretia so why was that yeah. so important for the macedonians and was that just simply because it was a, a well defended position so that they couldn't you know get all the way to pella basically in the rich cities uh in the north of greece um or was this region, you know, particularly rich for any reason? Or was it just like, this is just a good region for defense. That's why we're going to try and hold this region and maybe push the Illyrians back from here. No, it was a really good border region, mainly. It was not um, really uh, fertile. And um, yeah, the Macedonian kings often took care um, that their border regions are kind of desolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, which... Um, the later Philip V also did against the Dardanians. Mm. But uh, yeah, the Dasaretes was a kind of poor region, but there were, like I said, many fortresses um, like uh, Pelion. Scholarship is not 100% sure where all the fortresses are located. They aren't still sure if Pelion is there where we think it is. Yeah. Um, so it's pro probably around the spot where we put it. And. Um, so this was um, a really good spot to kind of bottleneck Illyrian incursions. And every every time the Dasaretes was held by the Macedonians, Illyria had a rather hard time getting into Macedon. And if the region was insecure, like during the Macedonian wars against Rome, where Rome immediately went for the Dasaretes, um, it was really easy for the Roman Illyrian allies to get into Macedon and yeah. break havoc. <laughs> <laughs> so basically it's just a really well defensible region and uh you know easy to uh, easy to uh, to watch anyone coming in and stop anyone coming in basically um that's yeah. cool you see the little minor Illyrian region above the Dasaretes uh, this one yeah his, his kana. um this also count, counts a bit into this region it's also sometimes um called the Dasaritian uh, uh, region yeah. and um, but they appear quite late in the I think third Macedonian wars where Philip uh, where per Perseus I think it is um, attacks them to take their fortresses because they also have quite a few in that region um, I think Livy says they have 11 fortresses yeah and um, he tries to take them all and Rome and um, Perseus fight over them a lot. So yeah, this, this whole Dasaretus region from north to south is, is really important for uh, Macedon. Yeah, cool. Awesome. And um, follow-up question, then second question on what's uh, what's been said so far. So why why 
would Glaucias take in Pyrrhus when Pyrrhus, obviously, his family were killed and overthrown? Why would they would they take him in? Would it would, is it simply to you know basically farming influence in Epirus, basically down south, uh, to try and raise someone and, and create an ally there? Or um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's definitely one of the main reasons. Um, like I said, the Illyrians were really well connected with the Macedonians. And when I say Illyrians in this case, um, I refer to the Illyrians inside the Illyrian kingdom because that's kind of the, what um, most authors meant at the time when they said Illyria. They didn't really count um, like Damasia and um, Histria like we do. Um, so they really meant this region. And um, yeah. After Philip conquered Illyria, he was, um, and even before that, um, they had marriage politics. Um, Philip married an Illyrian um, noble's daughter, and um, like during the wars of the successors, there was an Illyrian princess, um, Oridike, um, who who also tried to claim the throne with. Um, with um, Alexander's half brother, uh, she married him, and so Illyrians also tried to get their hands into the succession of the Macedonian throne. Yeah. Um, so Glaucias also had an interest he, in that. He was not just like a former vassal um, of Philip and Alexander. Um, he also had a claimant in his court with Pyrrhus, who was mm. like a, um, uh, I think a second cousin or something of Alexander. Well, and if even if even at the time, even if someone didn't have a claim, if they had a big army, they had a claim, didn't they? So, <laughs> yeah, uh, Pyrrhus was kind of. Um, I mean, um, Alexander's mother, uh, Olympias, um, she was a pirate. Mm. So, um, and the Ayakides, um, they were the at the time the um, rulers of uh, Epirus. And um, because the current king of Epirus, uh, Ayakides, was kind of, um, he wasn't liked, and um, the family was overthrown, and in, in this rage, the populace wanted to kill the entire family. And so Pyrrhus was rescued and mm. taken to Illyria into, um, um, into exile. He was like two years old or something, and... Um, Tutak, um, our source who likes to tell stories a little bit exciting, um, <laughs> um, he has um, pearls like crawl, he's still a little baby, crawl on his knees to um, Glaucias and um, take like uh, take like to his knee, which was a gesture of um, of a sub suppliant, um, yeah. like someone who goes to the temple and begs for. Um, for mercy or for for something for the favor of the gods yeah um so he was kind of first laughing at it and was like oh, this this baby is like a, a suppliant but then he was also um yeah kind of sad by it and he was hoping to to get Pyrrhus back to his home but also of course get kind of something out of it and um, yeah probably so if, if a, Sorry, last point. If Mununius and Mutilos are successors of Glaucias, it could be that there was another succession crisis in Illyria that Pyrrhus claimed Illyria because he was brought up in the court of um, um, of Glaucias. And um, he also married an Illyrian princess. Um, and there is Mononius and Mytilos, who yeah. are also rulers of Illyria, so that's why there might have been a war between the son of Pyrrhus and the son of um, Mononius. Mm. Cool. Um, and finally, just one quick quick thing as well about Glaucias. Obviously, mentioned in the developer diaries that he, he ruled for at least 30 years, you know, 30 years after Alexander's death, so... I'm assuming, what, 40 years, maybe 50 years at max, I guess, that he I ruled for? From 340 to around 305, 4, 3 to 1. Uh, yeah. Around the time, we don't know when he died. So about um, 35 years at, at least. Yeah. Like 32. 
30 to 40 years is a good um, rule of thumb for him, I, I think. And how rare was that at the time? Because I'm assuming with the amount of backstabbing <laughs> and wars going on, that that was during, extremely rare. During the wars of the successors, um, that was quite long. I guess um, a, a few of them got relatively old. Yeah. Um, I mean, like the the final battle because before it went down in Macedon with the Celtic invasion was um, the battle between um, Lysimachos and uh, Seleukos, who were both almost 80 at the time, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and um, not even mentioning Ptolemy, who was just chilling in Egypt, um, basically unobstructed. So yeah. um, I, I guess people could get relatively old, but... Um, but they're quite quite in, in that in, in that area you didn't really rule that long i think yeah well before 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 something happened <laughs> some accident hunting accident basically oh no he was hunting and someone accidentally shot him through the head with a javelin <laughs> Oops. yeah yeah it was an accident <laughs> um quite practically um Pyrrhus dies in argos yeah um because he got hit by a brick yep um but right before that, um, there is a soldier he fights against who um, sees him, and um, as soon as Pyrrhus is hit by the brick, uh, he takes out an Illyrian knife and tries to cut Pyrrhus's head off. Yeah. Um, and then uh, he succeeds, I guess, because he brings the head, um, or the son of Antigonus brings the mm. head to, to Antigonus after the battle, and he's really shocked to see the head of his rival and is really outraged. <laughs> He has to cru uh, to to just cut the head of a of a king. Yep. Um, so yeah. Out um, of all the ways for Pyrrhus to die as well, that's uh... with with an Illyrian knife. I yeah. guess he died because of the brick. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. We don't know. It, it could have been. It could have been the knife. But you never know, dear. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Cool. Sorry. I I I just thought those questions were quite pertinent to uh, to the Illyrian well, kingdom. <laughs> so. Um, um, I guess we were at the point where they were attacking Macedon, right? Um, yeah, the Illyrian Kingdom, as we have it now, which is kind of the, the successor kingdom of either the Tolentians or the Dasaritians, um, we, we can't really be 100% sure, um, they end up falling somewhere around 240 BC under the rulership of the Ardii. Um, and King Agron and um, Queen Teuta and um, we don't really know how that happens we just know um, when we get our sources back into this area because we have a re real scarcity of sources mm. um, suddenly um, Teuta tries to conquer Epidamnos um, so and it's in Greek hands because and uh, I think there's also an attack on Apollonia because the Apollonians, uh, Apolloniats, Apolloniots, call in the Romans for help. Um, so, whatever happens in like these 30 years is not entirely clear. Um, and what happens to, to the Illyrian kings? Maybe they lose against Alexander of Epirus. Um, maybe they, they get destroyed in infighting. Yeah. And. Um, we can say with um, Agron, the the Ardian king, he gets he becomes a new king of Illyria. Um, this is a title that is of course applied by by the Romans and Greeks. Um, we don't really care a hundred percent which Illyrian rules now. <laughs> yeah, it's all Illyrian to them, and they all call each um, uh, themselves um, Illyrian kings, I guess. And. Um, so these territories, Lysos, um, the Talantians, probably also the Patinoi, um, they fall under Ardian rule, and it's the Romans that, um, yeah, that liberate them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you first get, I think, the Patinoi who, um, who are in the south next to Apollonia, um, in in Dimale. They are the first ones to go over to the Romans and are like, please help us against the Ardii and, um, or I guess against the Illyrian Kingdom and then, um, 
others follow. Um, even the RDI themselves, funnily enough, after the Romans beat Teuta, um, they liberate the RDI from the from the Illyrian kingdom. Um, but it's still the RDI and kingdom of the Illyrians. Um, <laughs> Because a later source tells us that that Agron was a um, was an RDIN ruler. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, nice. Interesting. Really interesting. So, in terms of their um, their units, then uh, I think they've got the standard Southern uh, Southern Illyrian roster, haven't they? Um, do they yeah. have any? I don't believe they have any sort of uh, unique units as the Illyrian Kingdom. They just have the Southern. But, but guys, there are new units coming as well. So these are not all the units, by the way. And just so you know, when we have a look at some of these units, the stats haven't been fully finished yet. So when we have a look at them, don't get too excited over the stats. They are all going to be done uh, as well as the, um, you know, all of the rosters getting a couple of extra units. Not all of the rosters, but in terms of the whole uh, Illyrian sort of rosters getting a few more units as well. So, um... Uh, that's cool, but I don't think they have any sort of specific AOR-ish unit, really, do they? Just the standard Southern Illyrian roster. Yeah, I guess the Illyrian Kingdom has the advantage of getting more Greek AOR in Epidamnos and Apollonia yeah. when they conquer it. Um, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so that's an advantage in this, um, in this special regard. Um, other than that, they have the standard uh, Southern Illyrian roster. It's a bit... Um, of course, inspired by this famous spell plate that everyone puts in their papers and books when they talk about the Illyrians. <laughs> um, you know exactly which one I mean. It's it's literally their faction symbol, and it's also the faction symbol of the RDI in Rome Total War. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's but we can be quite sure that they have hoplite-like units. Mm. Um, the source of um, Ariane, uh, Ariane, who um, tells us the whole Anabasis of Alexander, like the, the Alexander campaign. He also tells us about this Battle of Pelion that I mentioned. And he just outright calls them hoplites. Um, yeah. He says the Tolentians bring um, a bunch of hoplites, peltas, slingers, and cavalry. And um, yeah, so. Um, and they have pretty. Uh, what you might not expect from like people that are usually called barbarian um, they have really disciplined formations something mm. that the sources even when they call them barbarians repeatedly mention in the hellenistic era is that the illyrians have really disciplined formations a bit like maniples of the romans yeah um that are really good aggressively um at routing enemies <laughs> and um really disciplined and um not um quite easy to route so the romans have their issues against them when they uh, fight them on on issa and um yeah they they relieve an arcananian city from an aetolian siege yeah and um they their polybius describes how their um let's call it battalions their maniples um their formations just wander towards the Aetolians and charge them in formation and rout them immediately. <laughs> and um, we have, I think, it's Philip who also sends Illyrian um, mercenaries to Crete, and they are they they do a pretty good job. Um, Antigonus Doson, the um, yeah the grandchild of Antigonus Gonatas, uses uh, Illyrians in. Zelazia against the Spartans to take a hill. Um, so yeah, they are pretty. They are always known as kind of assault units who are very good aggressively, but also very disciplined, um, which cool. you don't really expect from from the Illyrians, since you don't really, since people tend to not really know a lot about. Well, there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. Of course, you can check out the longer video down in the description below. Make sure you do like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again on the next video.